affordable jumping hour watch that looks this good? Yes, please. Hello, you're watching James. My name's James, you're watching me, and I'm talking about watches. And today, I'm talking about a watch that Merca Group has sent out to me. When they reached out to me and said, hey, we've got this Pierre Paulin jumping hour watch. Would you like to check it out? I said, wow, not only does it look cool, not only do I like the difference in the movement, but it's also really affordable. It's at 129 US dollars on the Merca website. Now, they did send it out to me, so I get to wear it, I get to enjoy it, I get to have it in my collection, and I get to share it with you guys. That's why there is this sponsored icon, but I'm also gonna leave you the link to their website below. This one is available on the Merca website, but I think it's gonna also be available on AliExpress. For now, let's flip the camera, because I wanna give you my first impressions of my very first jumping hour watch, and my very first jumping hour watch that looks this good, and my very first mechanical jumping hour watch that looks this good at this sort of price. Let's check it out. So this Pierre Paulin is actually available in two sizes and two colors. It is available in a 36 and a 38, in salmon and in silver. Now I've got the salmon one here, which is actually pretty interesting because I've never had a salmon dollar watch. And as soon as I pulled it out of the packaging, there were four things that stood out to me. And the first thing that stood out to me, strangely enough, wasn't the jump hour feature or the jumping hour feature. It was the details on the dial. If you just look closely, you're gonna see so many different surfaces different sort of patterns, different levels. You can see that the outer sort of area with the numbers is kind of flat, but then it's segmented into two in like an outer and inner. Then in the center here, you've got this sort of sunburst sort of effect going on, but it's actually like grooves 3D in. The sub second hand is then subset down into that. The Pierre Paul in and automatically is set above that. The hour feature there is actually set down into the dial. There is just so many details, and those sort of uh, details, those 3D effects, really then play with the color, and it's the details that were the first thing that stand out to me. So the second thing that stood out to me is probably the more obvious thing, and that is that the time-telling feature of this watch is a little bit different to normal. Now, it is very easy to tell the time. You can see that the hour is one, it is now at the 15, so it's 1.15, and you have a sub-second registry there. So it's a very easy to tell the time. It's just a very different way of telling the time, and it does take a moment of going, oh, how do I tell the time again? Oh, yeah, 1.15. But then there was the third thing that stood out to me, and it didn't stand out to me straight away. It actually stood out to me once I started wearing this watch, and this the time started to move around, and it got to the sort of 12 o'clock. Now, this is the third thing that stood out to me. What is the time now? Well, if I look behind that minute hand, oh, I, yep, I can see it's a two, but it kind of blocks that a little bit. So you realistically sometimes have to sort of wait till it just passes before you can actually tell what the hour is. So that was the third thing that stood out to me. The fourth thing, the final thing that really stood out to me is the quality of the case. Now, these Mercure watches and Pierre Paulin watches and FOD watches, this sort of same company that does all these watches, do tend to use the same case in a lot of their watches. And I'm perfectly okay with that because I really like this case. This sort of 38 millimeter size is lovely. And I like the quality of it. I like the brushing. I like the case back as well. It's relatively simple, but I like that line. I've seen it a few times now, and I do enjoy it. Now, beside those things that did stand out to me, there were some other things that I do really like about it. I like that it is an automatic movement. It is also hand winding. It does not have a ghost position, which is nice, but there's no hacking feature, as you can see there. The strap that comes with it, it kind of looks okay because this sort of gray kind of goes with the salmon dial, but it does feel very plasticky. It sort of feels like a molded plastic. Underneath there's a little sliver of black leather to give you a little bit more comfort on wrist. It is very soft. It is actually very comfortable to wear on the wrist. The hardware is quite nice, but it's probably not going to be the strap that I'm going to end up wearing this one on, just because it does feel a little bit like a molded sort of rubber or plastic there. I think there's going to be some other straps in my collection that I'm going to be wearing this one on. And on the wrist, not only is it comfortable, but I think it looks absolutely fantastic as well. It's really down to those dimensions. That movement must be fairly thin as well because it really sits down on the wrist as well. It's such a slightly different watch, but an elegant looking watch, but something different. Yeah, I'm really quite impressed by this. I really quite like it. And I like that there are so many nice and interesting details about it. I'm looking forward to wearing this one longer term and then coming back with a full in-depth review. Until then, maybe check out these videos next.